Hey, what's up guys, this is Tristan, and I've been meaning to do my manga collection video for quite some time. I mean, I was originally I was going to do it like a month ago, and I obviously didn't, so now I'm finally cracking down and doing it. And first off, I know the earbuds don't exactly look great, but I'm currently working out some audio stuff, so it's not going to be permanent, it's just for the time being. And if you don't know already, I'm actually the writer of a graphic novel series that's currently on Amazon and a ton of other websites called White Taiki. We got volume 1 and 2, both physically, and yeah, if you want to check these out, you can check them out in the link in the description below. All my Amazon stuff is on there, but it's on some other sites, but Amazon's probably the cheapest. Now, I know some people aren't the biggest fan of promotional stuff in these videos, but manga collection videos always do super well. So I really wanted to get the word out, because that's the only way people are going to hear about it. And I have a ton of other stuff that I'm working on right now, and I think it's going to be pretty good. I'll talk about that at a later point, but... Yeah, if you're interested, link in the description. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to start off the white shelf over here and make my way down. I currently have a little over 500 volumes. I'm not sure exactly how much, I haven't counted in a while. But yeah, over 500. Um, if you notice something that wasn't here last year or something that I talked about that isn't here, it's probably because I either read it at the library digitally or just sold it because I didn't like that much. But yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> So starting off on the top of my shelf, I have Vinland Saga, number 7. I already read this about a year ago, I'm currently rereading the entire farm arc. I just need to reread, like, a little bit of this end stuff here. Pretty much once I finish this video, I'm gonna finish rereading that, and then I'm gonna get on to some later Vinland Saga stuff, but I'll talk about that later in this video. And here I have, um, the reprise of the Spear Hero. I, it's like a Shield Hero spinoff. I got this in the mail for free by One Piece Books, because they want me to make a video on this. And I will at some point. Um, I'm not fully sure when, but yeah, I didn't even know that existed until I got this in the mail, but cool. Next up on the top of my shelves is Dragon Ball 1 all the way to Dragon Ball Z 26. All 42 volumes of Dragon Ball, and all its shimmering glory... And Dragon Ball is one of my favorites. I know it's not the most in-depth series, but it does have a lot of great character stories. I mean, like, a lot of people can just write it off as characters screaming at each other, and that's the bulk of the series. But no, the series actually has some amazing character moments and character, character explorations. I think it's pretty great. I definitely love both for different reasons, but Dragon Ball in its entirety from start to finish is such a lovable series, and if you haven't read it for some reason and you like Shonen, I would definitely recommend jumping on it, because it's such an amazing series, one of my favorites, and yeah, um, I'm really glad I own all this, I'm not a big fan of the Vizbigs, um, just because they're too big, but yeah, uh, great stuff here. So before I go any further, I want to mention that if you hear any clicks and clacks throughout the video, it's because I spent about five hours with customer support trying to deal with it. And long story short, Apple kind of sucks. So, yeah, on that note, I'm going to try to fix it. Um, I'm confident that I'll be able to solve it. Not right now, but yeah. Hope you can deal with it for the time being. Anyways, we got Fullman Alchemist box set 1 through 27. And the thing about these box sets... Um, is, I'm not sure if this is just for me, but the Velcro over here always kind of breaks on these um, when I like keep it in the box set. Usually I just kind of put it on the shelf afterwards, but this one I just left in the box set. But anyways, Fullman Alchemist is a really great series. I should probably reread it at some point. It's pretty long, so I'm not sure when. Next up, I have Hunter x Hunter 1 through 35. And then we got two Japanese things here. The exclusive volume zero, which is pretty rare. And then the Hunter x Hunter 33 in Japanese. And I actually got both those in Japan um, a couple years ago. Pretty cool stuff. And I know 36 is out, but I haven't gotten it. Um, I'm not really in a rush just because, as you know, the series is pretty infamous for going on hiatuses a lot. But it's one of my favorites. I mean, I know a lot of people are pretty hesitant to jump into Hunter x Hunter because of the, of the uh, hiatuses, but if you read volumes 1 through 32, 
that's a really great stopping point. And then you could probably just wait, like, I don't know, 10 years until more comes out, because we haven't gotten a new chapter in quite some time. I don't blame Togashi, because his back is mega sore. Um, but yeah, great stuff there. So next up is The Flowers of Evil 1 through 11, and then we got uh, 4 and 5 in Japanese. And this is one of my favorite series of all time. It's probably my third favorite series at the moment. I mean, it is my third favorite series at the moment. And it's great. I mean, I don't even know where to begin on the series talking about it in this short of a time. But essentially, if you've read any of uh, Shuzo Shimi's other works, and you're fine with reading something that's pretty weird and pretty out there, but it's some great stuff. So, yeah. And then next up, we got... Happiness, 1 through 8, another series by Shuzo Shimi. Um, I've read the series about three times. I've read all the physical volumes, um, and then I read all the chapters uh, as they were coming out, because after volume 3, I read all the chapters online as they were coming out, and then I read the series again uh, before my review. So, I don't know, probably about three times. And I need to get the last two volumes physically, but yeah, great stuff here. So next up is Death Note 1 through 12, and then just the encyclopedia that came with the box set. And I don't know what more to say. It's Death Note. I'm pretty sure everyone's read it. If you haven't, jump on it. I should probably reread it, um, but yeah, it's really memorable. It was the first manga series I've ever, ever read, and I remember pretty much every detail about it. So yeah, it's pretty great. Next up, Gyo, Ujimaki, and Tomie. Suzo Shimi is pretty great. Um, I will admit, after reading some of his other stuff that's later in my collection, his stuff is pretty, pretty repetitive, but he still does have some very enjoyable stuff. Uh, Uzumaki is one of my favorite manga series, probably towards the bottom of my top 20 list, but still pretty great. And these other two, pretty good too, but Uzumaki... Go read that. So next up is One Piece 1 through um, 89. I almost kind of forgot how many One Piece volumes I had for a minute. I don't like One Piece as much as I used to, but that's not to say it's bad. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's currently 11th place, I believe, in my top 20 list. I'll need to look over my list again, but yeah, somewhere around there. Great stuff here. I'm not going to buy any more One Piece volumes because... You know, the series is like 90-something volumes long now, and it's not going to end for quite some time. I've read a good amount of the chapters digitally. I think the last chapter I read was like 950 or something like that, so I'll need to catch up. Not really in a big rush, because it's more fun to read that stuff in bulk um, than the figures here. And I'm probably going to sell some parts of One Piece at some point. I'm not going to sell all of it, because I like One Piece. But I don't see myself rereading the majority of this stuff, so I'm probably going to keep some of the stuff, like Volume 7, because uh, Sanji's my favorite character, and then I'm going to keep all of Eni's Lobby in Water 7, and then some other stuff too. I know Whole Cake was one of my favorites, even though some people weren't big fans of it. But yeah, I'm probably going to do that at some point. Not soon, but eventually. Next up is Shiver, Smashed, Frankenstein, and No Longer Human, all by Junji Ito. I haven't read No Longer Human yet, I just got that recently, but I'm excited to read it. As for these three, I think the Frankenstein story was pretty good. All of the stories in here are just fun to read. Um, but it is the type of thing where I pretty much read all these one after each other, so they did become pretty repetitive. Yeah, Junji Ito is still a great mangaka. Still has a lot of great stuff, but yeah, I mean, his stuff does get pretty formulaic, but I'm a big fan of him. Parasite Volumes 1 through 8, not related whatsoever to the Korean movie that came out recently, but that movie is quite outstanding, so definitely check it out. Anyways, though, I'm going to reread Parasite soon. I know I say I'm going to reread a lot of stuff, but this series I'm definitely going to reread within the next few months, so. Yeah, I'm excited for that. And next up, Hajime no Ippo, Volume 1, in Japanese. Looks like a pretty promising series. I read the first chapter or two online, 
and it seems pretty good. It doesn't have an English release, and it's like a thousand something chapters, so um, not sure if I'm ever gonna get around to it, but if it gets an English release, uh, I might check out a little bit. But yeah, it looks like some good stuff there. Next up, Vinland Saga 1 through 11. Obviously, 7 is on the top of the shelf, like I showed earlier, because I'm currently rereading that. Um, but yeah, Vinland Saga is the best manga I've ever read. My favorite series of all time. And I'm really excited to read 8 through 11. I mean, I've reread 1 through 7 twice now. And yeah, I'm really excited to read the Baltic Sea War. I hear it's not as good as some of this stuff, but nonetheless, I'm still pretty hyped. So next up is Welcome to the NHK 1 through 8 complete series. And the series is pretty good. I'd probably consider it top 25 or lower top 20. Um, not fully sure, but somewhere around there. Good stuff. Um, it has some really great themes, and it's it's not exactly uplifting. I know it's kind of considered a comedy, as you can see by the symbol down there. And even though it does have some goofs and gaffs, I feel like a lot of the humor is more cringe humor. And a lot of the humor is almost kind of hard to read <laughs> just because of, like, how, um, uh, yeah, I guess cringeworthy it is. And I don't even know. You, gotta, you kind of have to check it out yourself to really get what I'm talking about. Sometimes the tone just goes from comedy to super dark within, like, two pages. But, yeah, I really like it overall. Next up is Noragami 1 and 2. I've owned these for a while, but I actually haven't read them yet. Um, I've seen the first season of the Noragami anime, and that was super good, and I've heard the manga is really good too, and I heard after the first season content, it gets even better, so I definitely want to check out Noragami at some point, probably after I read and reread a few things, I'm gonna check the series out, um, but yeah, I'm probably just gonna pick up volumes at the library, because I, I'm, I'm not really too big into buying manga now, just because... Uh, my collection's already so big, there are definitely some things that I want to buy, if it's like a shorter series or something that I want to finish off. But for long stuff and ongoing stuff, probably just can pick it up at the library or digitally. But yeah, I'm excited to read Noragami because, um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Next up is the big Naruto of 1 through 72. We got the thing that came with the third box set and 72 in Japanese. And I'm a big fan of Naruto, but after 48... The series really kind of takes a dip in quality, and I know some people are like, oh, it's not that bad, it's just one arc, but it's a big arc. I mean, after 48, the pain arc is great, but then the Kage Summit arc is not that interesting to me, and then the war arc, the beginning of it, is pretty slow, and I wasn't that invested into it, but then once Naruto comes in, it gets significantly better, and then once Madara comes into the um, the war arc, it gets even better. And I feel like after Madara comes in, it actually gets pretty enjoyable. But that first stretch really just overstays its welcome. But the end of the series was pretty satisfying, even though I wasn't a big fan of the Kaguya stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really like all the Boruto and all that stuff, but... I mean, I haven't really checked much of it out myself, so maybe it's good, maybe not. I'll have to see at some point, but not too interested at the moment. Next up is Moggy 1 through 21. And Moggy is pretty great. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to finish the series. I definitely want to read the rest at some point, but it's a pretty long series, so it's not my number one priority, but yeah, Moggy's definitely... A very good series. Next up, we got Blade of the Immortal 1 through 15. Um, I've read half the series. There's another 15 volumes that I should get around to. Um, and I'm not sure when, but I heard that the final arc is incredible. And I'm excited to see that. There are some very fluid fight scenes in here. I do think that Blade of the Immortal is a little bit overrated. I don't want people to take that the wrong way, because it's definitely a great series, but I don't think it's as incredible as something like Vinland Saga or even Berserk, but it's pretty good. And then over here, we got Blue Spring. This is a collection of short stories by 
Tayo Matsumoto. Very good stuff here. And then we got Helter Skelter. This is, um, a pretty strange manga. I mean, the artwork is really something else. Um, like, it's very much, like, it looks pretty sloppy. But hopefully I didn't show anything, like, edgy there. I'll also look over the footage. But, yeah, it's pretty sloppy. But it kind of fits the tone of the series. And if you want to know the story for Elter Skelter... It's essentially like Zoolander, but it's not funny, and it's pretty messed up. Then we got Abandon the Old Tokyo by Yoshihiro Tatsumi. I definitely need to check out more Tatsumi stuff, because this was a very good collection of short stories. Probably some of the best, one of the best collections of short stories I've seen. So, yeah, I definitely need to uh, jump on more of his stuff. And then after that is Fist in the North Star. One and two, and I haven't even read these, actually. I got these because they look really cool, and then I keep forgetting that, they, that I have them. Um, I honestly kind of thought that I sold them because they're, like, in the back of the shelf here, and they're kind of hidden by this thing. But, yeah, I'll have to give these a read at some point. Um, I'm not expecting anything big because Fist of the North Star basically looks like a series of uh, huge characters just fighting and exploding each other and whatnot, but it, it's a pretty influential series, very influential, actually, and, yeah, I'll have to give it a read at some point, and these are kind of rare, not as rare as the older volumes, and, I mean, the later volumes in the series, but, yeah, some pretty cool stuff here. Neon Genesis Evangelion 1-14, through 14, very good series here. Um, the first six are basically kind of like a mech series um, with kind of a dystopian tone to it and some moody vibes. And then as the series goes on, it actually gets pretty depressing and not exactly uplifting. But with that being said, it is still one of my favorites. Top 10 for me. I think it's like around 6 on my top 20 list. I don't know, somewhere around there. It's been a little while since I checked where my ranking was at. But... Yeah, if you haven't read Neon Genesis Evangelion, I'd strongly recommend checking it out. It definitely got me a while to really pick up all of these, but once I read it, I really liked the series. I need to reread it. I know I've said that for quite a lot of stuff, but yeah, I mean, good stuff here. Go check it out. Next up is One Punch Man, 1 through 15. I haven't read volume 15 yet, but the series is very good, and it kind of sucks that they did the second season dirty, because after volume 7, the series just gets even better, and it has some of the funniest and coolest fight scenes after the season 1 content, so it's disappointing that they did that, but the manga is great, it has some of the best art I've seen in a shonen series, I think it's considered shonen, I know some people are like, oh no, it's seinen, but I don't know, I just call it shonen, but anyways, yeah, great stuff here, it's funny as hell, it'll have you getting hyped, and laughing your ass off, and it's just a great series overall, it actually does have some pretty good themes, even though it's mainly just a comedy action series, but yeah, go check it out if you like funny stuff and cool stuff, not sure what more to say there. So next up is My Hero Academia 1 through 18, and My Hero Academia is probably my favorite shonen series at the moment. It's not as um, in-depth or as profound as something like Contra X Hunter, but I honestly think that the characters are probably my favorite shonen characters at the moment, and it's kind of just a relatable series. I know that sounds kind of cheesy. I always hate calling a manga series relatable, because, I don't know, it just sounds kind of like lame, but uh, very good stuff here. I really want to check out... Um, 19 through 22, I believe that's the pro hero arc, and that's probably where season 4 is going to cap off, I don't really watch the anime, I mainly just read manga, but yeah, I'll probably pick those up from the library, and yeah, I'm hyped, My Hero Academia slaps, uh, Deku is one of my favorites, uh, Lemillion, Miro Togata, Miro Togata, one of my favorites too, so many great characters in here, and I could just go on and on, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. So next up is number 6, volumes 1 through 9, probably top 25 worthy, I don't think it'd be my top 20, but 
Very good stuff here. This is, so let's see what the artwork looks like. And let me find a good page to show. Um, but it's essentially a sci-fi series of, they're in, th of, um, they're in this place called Number Six, and it's supposed to be utopian society, but it ends up being quite not that. And they're basically like, we gotta get the hell out of here, because this is bad. And it's, uh, basically government conspiracies, and I'm explaining it poorly, but, yeah, it's good. Now... Let me just show a little bit of the artwork here. I know it's the type of thing where you're not exactly supposed to be showing artwork of manga on YouTube, um, because a bunch of Shueisha series got a bunch got flagged and whatnot, but I don't know, I don't really care. Here you go. Pretty cool stuff there. The artwork's pretty good for the most part. Every once in a while it'll look a little not as good as it does for the rest of the series. But overall, I really like how the inking is, the shading, and all that, and I'm pretty impressed by the series. Not a lot of people talk about it, but it's good, so go check it out. So next up is Bleach 1 through 21, also known as the best part of Bleach. I don't know if I need to say more, but I guess I will. Um, basically, 1 through 8, I believe, is basically a slice of life, fighting monsters and whatnot. And then, like, 9 through 21, somewhere around there, is where the series becomes incredible. And I've read, like, till around volume 36 or so, digitally. And, long story short, I didn't really like it all that much. I feel like, even though there's some cool stuff, and Ulkiora is one of my favorite villains in the entire series, I just didn't really care that much about some of the henchmen. And, even though, if you like Bleach a lot... Good for you, I don't want people to think I'm, like, hating on Bleach. But, yeah, I'm just not really a giant fan of the stuff after this. But, the artwork is cool. And, yeah. Next up, we got Yu Yu Hakusho 1 through 19. Great stuff here. By the creator of Hunter x Hunter. Not nearly as good as Hunter x Hunter. But still, very, very good. It contains some of my favorite shonen characters ever. Yusuke Urameshi is probably top 5 shonen characters of all time for me, and the side characters are incredible, and yeah, there's just, there's just so much to love about the series. And Yu Yu Hakusho actually really inspired Bleach. If you've read Bleach and Yu Yu Hakusho, you can kind of see the similarities. I like Yu Yu Hakusho a lot better, I'm not going to go in depth into that, but Hiei is essentially Uryu, um, Yusuke kind of Ichigo, Botan, Rukia, and there are a lot of plot points that I could go into too about Yusuke and Ichigo's dads um, that are pretty much the same, but yeah. Uh, Yu Hakusho, great stuff. Bleach 1 through 21, very good. I'm not a big fan of the stuff after that in Bleach, but yeah, if you want to read Bleach, I definitely recommend checking out this content. Alright, so we're in the home stretch here with the end of my collection. We got Berserk 1 all the way to 21. And I honestly think that the first three volumes of Berserk, a little, I don't want to say generic, but a little generic. And they're not super interesting. But after that, the series gets incredible. The Golden Age arc is fantastic. And then after that, I was a little worried about the Conviction arc. And even though I'm not a giant fan of the... Lost Children mini arc, I think it goes to like 17 or something like that, but then like the end of 17 to 21 is probably on par with the Golden Age arc. It's not as big, but wow, I mean, it's crazy, and I want to read this stuff after this at some point. Um, it's a pretty long arc, so I'm not really in a rush to read it, but I definitely want to check it out at some point, because Berserk is one of my favorites. Next up is Tokyo Ghoul 1-9, through 9, and this series is very good. I read the rest of Tokyo Ghoul digitally, and I really like it. But I don't think I'm ever going to check out Re, because I was originally pretty hyped after I finished Tokyo Ghoul, and I was like, oh, once Re is finished being published, or once it's done, I'm going to read Re. But I heard it's just not very good. I mean, I heard it has some really good stuff in Re, and in the end, is not very good, which is disappointing, but Tokyo Ghoul itself is very good. 
I'm, I don't want to say my own opinion on Re because I haven't even read it. But yeah, if you want to read Tokyo Ghoul, I'd recommend jumping into it. But I'm not a big fan of how they split the series into two parts. Anyways, though, lastly is Ajin Demi Human Volume 1. I've been meaning to check out more Ajin Demi Human because the first volume was really good. But yeah, I'm excited to read more of that at some point. And that'll do for my collection. I'm also a fan of American comics. So we have a few here, some Thor, Spider-Man, Rick and Morty, Star Wars, uh, Batman, X-Men, American Vampires, Superman, and some Franklin Richards. Good stuff here. I've read way more than this. I used to own, like, literally, like, 30-something Batman graphic novels that I sold, and I read a few Batman graphic novels recently um, at the library. So most of the graphic novels I've read are Batman stuff, but... Yeah, some great stuff here. I like manga a lot more, but I do like to pick up a good comic book here and there and just sit down and read it. But yeah, I like manga better. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe, and drop a comment letting me know what you think about this video or stuff that I should get around to or just thoughts on some of the stuff in my collection. And also, the links to my Amazon stuff is in the description below. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.